eerie sight. Uh, the FDR Drive, which is normally full of cars and headlights, is eerily empty except for an occasional police car blocking access to the road. Now, we spoke with the Department of Transportation officials just a little while ago. They said that the chances that it would reopen it does not seem likely that it will reopen tonight, although earlier they had expressed hope that they would be able to uh, flush out some of the flooding conditions that had occurred um, earlier this morning at high tide and also to repair the guardrails that had been damaged uh, by police. But at this time, it looks like maybe they're waiting to see what happens at high tide later today. As of now, the FDR remains closed. I'm Kyung Yoon reporting live back to you in the studio. Okay, thank you very much, Kyung. And in Seagate, Brooklyn, residents are still reeling from the extensive damage caused by the storm. One woman says no one came to evacuate her, so she decided to ride it out. The waves were just knocking the sandbags over like nothing. We had a marble table crushed by the waves. But our wall held because, thank God, we had these rocks down on the beach. Um, without these rocks, my house would not be standing. Maisler said she was evacuated twice before in the last 30 years when bad weather hit. And we'd like to tell you again what's doing on some of the roads and bridges in our area. In the city, as you heard Keong say, the FDR still closed, as is the Harlem River Drive. The Throgs Neck and Whitestone bridges have been reopened, but with restrictions. The Belt Parkway has also been reopened. And in New Jersey, in Little Ferry, Route 46 has also been reopened. On the New Jersey Turnpike, trailers and motorcycles are banned from 7A to the norm northern terminus. And in Connecticut, the Merritt Parkway, the Connecticut Turnpike, and I-84 are open, but visibility is poor. And now, Nick Gregory has been tracking this storm for us all day. Nick, is it ever going to end? Very slowly. Patience is a virtue in this case, Amy. It really is, because this storm has been sitting here for two days, and it is really taking its time getting out of here. But I want you to look at the radar with me now, because you can see that right in here, notice there's nothing. There's a little dry air that has actually gotten brought in around the storm, which is still circulating right here off the coast of Long Island and New England. And actually, a little drizzle is being reported in parts east of the city, and uh, still a little snow to the north here as you go from Poughkeepsie towards the northwestern suburbs of New Jersey, where they've had a foot of snow in some places to as much as two feet at High Point State Park right now, and almost the same accumulation some of the higher elevations of northwest Connecticut. Now, what's also interesting, though, on the radar, notice this next band of precipitation that's showing up there east of New England. I don't think that's going to quite make it down here, but if it holds together and travels all the way across, we'll be in for another round of some, well, maybe some pretty decent snow later on tonight. So I'll be keeping you posted on that as the nighttime comes along. Well, since the storm is still out here, you can see it's churning up quite a fuss across all of the northeast. And again, the moisture is sort of being brought back, what we call a backlash from the Atlantic Ocean as it continues to spin out in the area. What's happening now, too, is, of course, the bad news of all in all of this has been the coastal damage. We're coming up on another high tide across the area. Uh, this one will not be as severe as any of the ones we've seen uh, in the last two days because the storm has weakened considerably and it's pulled out a little bit further. But nonetheless, the coastal flood warnings continue for all of the area. 9.43 will be the next high tide at Sandy Hook, about 10, uh, 20 or so at the Battery. And we're looking for uh, sometime uh, around midnight or thereafter as you head out on towards the central part of Long Island. So uh, something to keep in mind. Again, this time it will not be as severe. Fortunately, however, since you've already had damage along the coast, any time the tide comes up in this particular case is going to cause some problems, and we may see a tide of about two to three feet above normal. Snow advisory just inland from the city because there could be another inch or two of snow to fall. They still have a winter storm warning to the farther north and western suburbs where we'll have to watch that band if it makes it in from the eastern New England region. And again, I'll be keeping you posted on that as we bring another weather update in just a little bit. Amy? Okay, we're keeping our fingers crossed. And stay tuned to Fox 5 at 7.30. We will have a half an hour report on the storm and on the 10 o'clock news expanded team coverage of Storm 92 as well as the rest of the day's big news. I'm Amy Atkins. Because there's a monster amount of...